Bonjour, pilots! Hobbs here with the incinerator. Why am I French? I don't know. Maybe it's because we are going to be cooking up a lot of mechs today, no? <laughs> okay, I'll stop with the silly accent. Uh, but yeah, hey, I've got the incinerator here today, and uh, you can pause right here for the mech stats, like always, but yeah. Incinerator's a support slash suppression mech, and it's pretty different from a lot of the other mechs, and but yeah. If anything, I could compare it, though, as how it plays to kind of like a Vanguard, but it's a bit more suppressive, but uh, yeah. I'm just gonna get started in a bit, so alright, let's go! Okay, sorry if it seems like I'm going kind of fast in this video, uh, because there's a lot of information on this mech, and I only have a limited time to do it, so yeah, apologies for going fast, but yeah. This is one of my favorite mechs, so don't worry, I'll make sure I get as much about it in as I can. Okay, as for the weapons, this is like a suppression mech, so it's got a big old chain gun called the Baby Bear. It's kind of like a, I'd say it's like a bigger Vulcan in, in some respects. So, and then the secondary weapon, it was called the Saber Launcher, and it's the Fireball Launcher. This is why it is known as the Incinerator, and I'll get into that a little bit more. And there's also, the ability is called Heat Dispersion, and it's basically an explosion that you can trigger. So, uh, but again, these are all really complicated, so I'll get into them a little bit later. But uh, as for like general stats and how you kind of want to pilot it, it is, as far as speed is concerned, it moves at the speed of a Vanguard. So it's one of the faster uh, heavy mechs out there. Now, while it does have a fast walking speed and a fast boost speed, it actually has one of the smallest fuel tanks inside of the game. So yeah, you got to watch your fuel inside of this mech. So don't be boosting around too much or hovering, especially because hovering will just burn through your fuel. So bear this in mind that you're not going to be able to escape situations as easily because you're not going to be able to go as far with your uh, small fuel tank. So if you get into a situation, you better make sure you commit to it and that you're going to have to see it through because you, 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 even though you are you have speed, you're still a heavy mech, so you're going to be slower than a lot of the other mechs around, and plus the small fuel tank doesn't help that fact. So just be bear in mind that if you are going to go into a situation, you have to commit and pick your situations wisely too. And also stay with your team, because it is a heavy mech, and heavy mechs will get really overwhelmed very easily uh, if they're caught alone. And besides, uh, the incinerator is a support mech anyways, and so since you're a support mech, you want to stay by your team, because and how it actually supports the team is that it actually siphons off heat from your allies. So allies who are standing within a certain radius of you, will uh, they won't heat up as fast because what happens is the, the heat actually goes into your mech. And now you might think that's bad, but for the incinerator, it's actually a good thing, and I could and I'll explain uh, once we get to the weapons and how I talk into the ability a bit more. So as you can probably tell by uh, me playing and like you could see, and watching the footage that I have for you guys, you can tell that the incinerator is a pretty close range mech. I mean, it is using like a minigun and the fireball launcher because of its projectile nature. You know, it's not hit scan and uh, how kind of slow and how arcing it is. You can tell that this is meant for uh, close drop range because the incinerator at a range won't really be very, won't be effective at all because you'll have to really lead your fireballs, but then at that point they're easily avoidable. So remember, this is a close range support slash suppression mech. Okay, so how the heat mechanic on the incinerator works, like as I said, it's kind of reversed. And so what it does is that it uses heat for ammo. With the secondary weapon, the saber launcher, it uses heat, your heat for ammo. And essentially what the baby bear, the chain gun you have, is essentially it generates the heat for you to use and also is uh, suppressive. I mean, it's basically a bullet storm. Okay, the only real catch with the baby bear is that you really need to know of is that it uh, starts off shooting slowly and then it gradually gets a little bit faster. I mean, it, it, go, it, it starts shooting at full speed with it about holding your mouse for about two seconds. But yeah, uh, as I mentioned, it's pretty much there to be uh, the heat engine for your saber launcher. And what the saber launcher does is it, fire, it has two modes. It can shoot smaller fireballs and it can shoot big fireballs. You switch between the two modes by hitting middle mouse. Now, uh, I could bore you with all the statistics, but essentially, the little fireballs are better if you want more sustained damage, which means like out in the open and, uh, you know, over a longer period of time, they have better sustained damage. However, they have a small blast radius, so they're a little bit harder to hit because you have to kind of land direct hits with them. However, the bigger fireballs, they cost more heat to use, twice as much heat, but they don't do twice as much damage. But they do have a big blast radius, so they're easy to land, and you, but you can't fire them as often because the baby bear doesn't generate... I mean, it generates, a, it generates enough heat if you constantly hold it down to fire the little fireballs almost at uh, full speed. Almost at full speed. Now, the two fire modes don't actually have a different firing speed. It's just that the bigger fireballs, when you use them, it's just you won't be able to generate heat as fast, which is why you'll have to fire them slower. It's not, beca it's not because of the 
pre-fire rate of the weapon itself, it's because of the heat generation of the baby bear is, is actually fairly low compared to the other weapons. Now, uh, one more thing before the clip switches out and we move on to the next weapon. Uh, I just, just remember your passive ability and how it'll help out your teammates, because remember, you could siphon off heat from your teammates as they shoot their guns, so they can fire longer, and also you can fire longer too, because you can use that heat for your saber launcher. And so yeah, just remember to stick around teammates. You are a support mech, so support your team. Oh yeah, and uh, whoops, I almost kind of forgot. Uh, remember to fire your saber launcher because you still can overheat in this. Don't just like constantly hold down baby bear and uh, just you know forget to use your saber launcher because you can still overheat. Even though the overheat recovery time is only 3.75 seconds, you know it's just like overheating in any other mech. It really sucks because you're just completely disabled. And in the incinerator, you lose all your ammo for your saber. So. But yeah, we're moving on to the next weapon now. Okay, so now we're looking at the alternate weapon unlocked at rank 3 called the Papa Bear. This is my personal favorite, however, I will warn you right now, this is the hardest one to use out of all the weapons for the incinerator. Just giving you a warning right now. Now, the first thing you'll see about this weapon is that it takes 3 seconds for it to start shooting. Yeah, you heard me right, you have to spin the gun up for 3 seconds before it starts firing bullets. Now the reason for the spin-up on the gun, even though it sounds like it kind of sucks, is that because of the DPS this thing puts out, the damage per second, is just insane. It's like a, it's, this is literally the Vulcan's bigger brother. In fact, it's his father. So yes, this thing will actually output more damage than a Vulcan. However, with that, this comes also heat generation. But I'll get on that in a little bit. Just remember when the, the spin-up of, of this gun is remember, it's three seconds, so make sure you get the gun spun up and ready to go before you engage targets, not, you know, once they've engaged you. Because if, if you get surprised with this and your gun is not spun up, you're kind of dead. Because, you know, three seconds inside of an intense fight is it's uh, an eternity. And then you can see right here, you really, really don't want to overheat with this, because once you overheat, you have to re-spin up the gun again, as well as you lose the, uh, all the heat that you have. So can't even pop your ability or fire any saber launchers while your gun is still spinning up. So the overheat recovery time goes from like uh, four seconds to pretty much six. Yeah, I should have been dead when I was facing that scout, but only because I was facing AI I wasn't dead. Speaking of AI, that AI backed up into me while I was repairing without even noticing. <laughs> Their situational awareness is kind of crappy, but you know, it cracks me up. Anyways, back to the actual mech. So like I said, you really do not want to overheat on this thing, and because of how hot the gun runs, you gotta be very, very careful. In fact, you can't actually use it like Baby Bear. You can't just hold it down, because if you hold it down, even while you're spamming the big fireballs, in fact, you should only be using the big fireballs when using uh, the Papa Bear. But uh, even if you spam them as fast as you can, and you're alone with no uh, teammates giving you heat, you'll still overheat within five seconds if you, hold, if you choose to hold down Papa Bear. Now, it, heat might actually seem like your enemy, with this uh, weapon, but no, it's actually still your friend. It's not as much of your friend as it is on Baby Bear, but um, with Papa Bear, I'd say it's much more like a high-maintenance girlfriend. It's really nice, but you better damn well make sure you're doing it right. Now, that being said, you can still use Papa Bear without overheating, but just remember to fire Papa Bear in bursts, uh, like you can kind of see me doing here. Uh, well, usually what I do is I fire it for about half of a second, uh, stop firing, take about a quarter of a second to aim a saber, and just shoot it. And then after that I start firing again, and then I just repeat the pattern. Burst, stop, saber, burst, stop, saber, burst, stop, saber. I just repeat that pattern. In fact, if I can give you like an audio example of what it would sound like, it'd be like, taka kaka boom taka kaka boom taka kaka boom It should sound kind of like that. <laughs> Sorry for the cheesy sound effects, but that was probably the best example I could give of it. But yeah, remember that the heat is your friend because you can output a ton of damage with it. You just gotta make sure you don't overheat. Okay, and also on the subject of overheating, uh, if there's a player inside of your game who's throwing EMPs like a monkey throwing its crap after eating nothing but high fiber cereal for a week, don't use Papa Bear because EMPs will cripple you just like you overheat and I already told you how much that sucks. Pretty much the summary of how to use Papa is burst fire it and remember there's kind of a pattern to it and always use the big saber launcher uh, shots. So just remember once you've learned the pattern and you kind of get into it, uh, it's actually pretty easy. And also, if you try to get, if you start to get pretty high on heat, just uh, fire an extra saber between uh, between bursts. So uh, I usually wait until I hear like the audio reminder from my onboard computer that uh, 
I, I'm overheating. Once I hear that, I'll usually shoot two shots before I begin firing Papa again. Okay, so before I run out of time, I want to explain the ability Heat Dispersion. So what Heat Dispersion does is it causes an explosion, and that explosion will do damage based on how much heat you have stored up in your fan. But don't overheat because then you can't use the ability. So use it just before you overheat. And how it, and it does do more damage the more heat you have. In fact, it does three points of damage per every point of heat that you have inside of your mech, and I think pretty much all the mechs in the game store a little over 100 uh, points of heat. So you can do the math right there. That's 300 points of damage if you know how to, if you can get it just right, like just before you overheat. And so that's a lot of damage. And the blast radius is actually bigger than a shield. So uh, yeah, the blast radius is pretty huge. There is a bit of fall off, but if someone's relative about like one next distance away from you, they'll take the full damage. So yeah, I usually use it as a finisher move. So uh, because there, the way it works is there's an animation you see me do it is that ground pound. Until you see that red flash, the damage is not done. But once that red flash goes off, you would have dealt the damage. But if someone kills you before that, you won't deal damage. So there's a lot of timing that goes into that. I know the clip switch right here, but uh, I'm still going to go on right now. But uh, yeah, with the heat dispersion, just remember you are vulnerable when you use it. You're vulnerable during that entire animation. So like I said, use it as a finisher move, not add to, uh, to start a fight. Because you're just going to, you're vulnerable for like a whole three seconds pretty much. And Papa Bear works pretty good with that ability because quickly build up a lot of heat really really fast and then you know just blow the ability and do a ton of damage right on the spot but again use it as a finisher the way i kind of use it is i usually if i have an a class buzzing around me i'll uh, try to do as much damage as into them as i can while uh, you know trying to conserve heat like if i'm using baby i'll usually try to avoid using my saber but if i'm using papa i'll just quickly uh, i'll just deal out some damage to them and once i get them down to about half health i'll build up heat all the way and then just bang they're dead because, you know, especially if they start to hang, if they hang around too close to you, you can just kill them. Okay, now I know it's a bit of a late introduction, but, you know, following the Goldilocks theme of all the weapons of the incinerator, what, the first was Baby, then there was Papa, and now we have Mama Bear. It's the rank 5 prestige weapon, and as you can probably tell, Baby Bear was a little too cold, Papa Bear, a little too hot, but Mama Bear, just right. And what I mean by that is that, as far as, like, heat generation, uh, you can you can constantly spam the big fireballs and not worry about overheating like you would with Papa. It's it's just like it's like a bigger version of Baby Bear essentially. In fact, it actually fires very similar to Baby Bear, as in it'll instantly start shooting when you press the mouse. However, the firing rate is half that of Baby Bear, so it does start off pretty slow. And also, the biggest differences between uh, Baby Bear, Papa Bear, and Mama is that Mama actually is not hit scan and it doesn't use bullets like Baby and Papa does. It actually uses little projectiles. It's like little explosives. Have you ever seen the Redox on the Technician? It's basically a, it's basically a minigun version of the Redox launcher. And what it does is it actually has more of a support function rather than just flat out damage. What the support function does is that any uh, mech that's hit by the uh, Mama Bear will in experience increased heat generation, which means that uh, enemies who are hit by this for about two seconds after they were last hit by it, if they shoot their weapons, they're gonna oh, they'll generate a lot more heat than they normally would. So it'll cause enemies to overheat a little bit faster than they normally would. Also, beware of the splash damage if you're shooting someone who's really close to you or you're up close to a wall because you can't hit yourself with this, and yeah, that's not very good. You don't want to be damaging yourself too much. Now, as far as the trajectory of the uh, little explosive pellets, it's pretty much similar to your saber launcher, so it, you don't really have to adjust the aim too much. You just pretty much just have to constantly just, you know, aim saber shots. That's all you really gotta do with this weapon. And also, stay on the big... Uh, use the secondary mode with the big fireballs because that'll get the best out of uh, Mama Bear. Now because of the projectile nature of uh, you know having two projectile weapons it's gonna be a little bit harder to try to land shots on enemies and, at first but you know it's very good like for suppression so like if there's like a certain pathway that you don't want enemies walking down all you gotta do is just fire away at that spot and because no one would be stupid enough to walk into that 4th of July celebration and if they are well hey that's their fault. The best time to use Mama Bear, in my experience, is for the objective game modes like Siege or Missile Assault, because people will be a bit more concentrated and going down certain pathways, it's easier to track your enemy's movements, and, you know, therefore actually, you know, land shots on people or suppress them, because they're going to be coming from much more specific directions. Rather than, like, Team Deathmatch, it's going to be, eh, it's going to be a little bit hard, you know, because, like I said, Mama Bear isn't the best for dueling, it's definitely, it, it really goes into the support nature of, uh, the Incinerator. So, yeah, that's basically Mama Bear. 
Okay, so quick review of all the weapons. Baby Bear is obviously the beginner's weapon. It's the most controllable, easiest to use on the incinerator, and it's still very effective. Papa Bear is just raw damage. Hardest to use and very punishing when you don't do it right, but when you do do it right, it is extremely rewarding because, like I said, the damage output is just crazy. And Mama Bear has the best suppressive and uh, support potential out of all the other, uh, out of all the weapons. So, yeah, like I said, for objective games, Mama Bear is definitely a very good choice to pick. Now, as I always say, I will list items and internals like it's for separate videos, but the items and internals that I'm using here, they have not changed. The items are still the shield, hologram, and the repair kit, and the internal setup I use is the basic collectors, evasive device, and air compressor. Sorry, I need to explain a little bit more, but I'm running out of time here. Alright, and with that note, uh, that pretty much wraps up my incinerator guy. Sorry if I went by too fast, or if I didn't cover things as in-depth as you guys would have liked. Uh, I've actually had to record the commentary part of this twice, because the first time I did it, I was just, you know, I wasn't able to get the information out I, fast enough. You know, I was just running out of space, and I, yeah. I mean, I can do a follow-up video for you guys if you want me to go over certain things a little bit more in-depth. If you'd like, just, just let me know. Feel free to comment and le let me know what you guys want to see and uh, if you guys want to see it at all. But yeah, I just hope this tutorial helped you with my the incinerator. And yeah, next time I'll be doing the technician. And so like, comment, subscribe if you will. But for now, this is Soldier Hobbs signing off.